if there was one doctrine that really helped me begin to repent or to see things differently, it was the one one of those doctrines has to be among a deeper understanding of what it means to be the body of Christ. <clears throat> and you know, letting the Bible define what is the body, I know a lot of traditions define it differently, but if we look in scripture, Colossians is, is one of the greatest examples of spelling out for us and defining what is the body of Christ. Colossians 1.18 says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence or supreme rule. Same chapter, verse 24 says, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. The Bible defines the body of Christ as the church. And I know we have <clears throat> different representations within our lives and culture of coming together as you know, pieces and portions of that body. But it's still one body and one church. And being that body of Christ, if we'll start to understand our position within that body and that other believers are a part of that one singular body of Christ, it'll help us begin to to change our views on certain things and one of which is the need one for another that we cannot do this as effectively by ourselves it was never designed to be a single one man show and the importance of us being there for others praying for others physically going above and beyond to help another believer in Christ. Right now today, there are Christians that are struggling with their faith. There's Christians out there that are struggling with the collective components of their own lives, how they are going to try to approach something or deal with something and the worries and the struggles and the stresses these are ones that are currently in a position that you might be able to help. Um, be it physically or financially, you can be that ear that they need to talk to. They, they might not be able to, to vent their frustrations and their, their worries and things within their own family. Perhaps it's not a fully... Christian family of, of believers and they need somebody they need you to just listen to encourage to help to weep with them um, and over the years I, I've met a lot of other believers and I'm sure you have too and we'll we'll label them as brother or sister but we don't have that that connection with them that deep I care about you genuinely connection because we're we're spread out through throughout the world or your life itself is busy or you know many relationships that form on on the internet are quite shallow to be honest but I, I believe scripture shows us the need for that deep connection get to know that person, know their family, know their needs, know their their experiences, and share yours with them so they can begin to know you in a different way. You know, when we were lost but prior to trusting Christ, God, God knew of our existence. He knew of our sinful state. It's not that he didn't know those things, but when you trust Christ, you come into a different relationship when you become a son or daughter of God in which he knows you on a different level and you know him on a different level 
And that's what I'm talking about, taking that relationship with other saints to the next level. And 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 is a good, good example of understanding that the body is comprised of, of many people. They're skilled differently. They're their uh, talents are different, their education is different, their <coughs> drive is different. Some can cook, like wonderfully. Some can can fix things, some can speak, some can pray. Some are prayer you know, warriors. You've heard that expression, I'm, sh I'm sure. They, they show you the, the power in prayer and the need and the devotion for prayer, and you that's a a talent they have some people can always see the positive outcome their faith is at a different level these gifts in which god has bestowed upon us are unique and they're all necessary so much like you know different parts of your own body one is not any more important than the other you may not consider how certain body parts are less desirable to to think about but that's how scripture is explaining to us how the church the body of christ is made up it has comely or you know parts that are pleasant to look upon it has uncomely parts or things that are not pleasant you know you take your feet that's one of the most important aspects of your body because your ability to walk and stand and balance all hinge on that that body part and that's the way scripture uses the word member is a body part of a portion of of your body one is no more important than the other and oftentimes the less comely part has more honor in what it does so if your skill is uh, helping others if you have that that will and that drive let God use you if you're a speaker let God speak through you if you're that prayer warrior let God pray or through you you know pray to God let let those prayers flow we are not all to be to just you know try to train each other to be something the other person's not not everyone is an ear not everyone is a mouthpiece not everyone is a hand we're uniquely and specifically designed for a purpose and each is as honorable as the other and they're all important so we need i, I pray that we can begin to see each other that way that we can love each other to a point that as scripture tells us such as in first corinthians 12 25 through 27 that there should be no schism or division in the body but the, that the members should have the same care one for another that's an equal care and whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it you know if you strike your your finger with a hammer it's not just your finger that's affected the entire body is affected and that's how we should be when we're dealing with other believers we should weep when they hurt we should be connected to them on that that true level that we genuinely care one for another Or, on a more positive view, one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. We should rejoice in the, the good times as well. Be connected that when we see someone doing well, we see God working through them or we see a, a joyous occasion that we rejoice with them when you eat food your whole body rejoices in receiving that nourishment and we can help others 
by rejoicing with them. Weep when they weep, laugh when they laugh, and be on a level with them that it's genuine. Now ye are all, now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. God's body is vast and huge and complicated, much like your human body. There's so many components to it, and all are important. And I pray that we don't neglect the, the need for that understanding. I know it's difficult at times to develop those relationships if you know dozens and hundreds and you know thousands of connections online. It's, it's truly impossible to, to get that close to everyone. But it doesn't mean you can't do that with anyone. Take that first step. If, if someone else is shy in, in connecting that way, show them how much you care. Uh, I remember learning and watching older saints when... You know, because many times you might request prayer and somebody say, okay, I'll pray for you. And then I came across those saints when you said, well, will you remember this or that in prayer? They would say, well, let's do it right now. Let's pray right now. I don't want to forget. It's a need that you have. Let's go to the Father right now. That little... Uh, little thing to some to me struck a big chord and wow this person genuinely cares they're willing to stop what they're doing and pray with me right now your brothers and sisters out there are all dealing with many unpredictable things they're dealing with heartache struggles and many it's hard at times to just open up and ask for help. Our nature is that we want to do it all on our own. So maybe they need to know that they can open up. Be that person that they can trust. Be that person they can confide in and give them that extra support that will help them go a long way and get them through the tough time that they're going through. I can think of many times that saints stood by me and I look back at what a blessing it really was that I didn't even realize it at the time, but hindsight, I, I could see how their hope and their encouragement and their prayers were used to help me. And I think we should all do that for each other only God and that person knows what each individual is going through and you know I, I just hope and pray that we can rise up above shallow fellowship rise up above you know just taking an approach that we think well I, I really can't do anything well there's a lot that you can do that doesn't require giving money or it doesn't require those things which are all good things if you can but if you can't keep them in your thoughts when you're when you're praying to God remember them in prayer a kind word really goes a long long way the world constantly comes at believers with negative and reasons to give up hope. Give them a reason to see that God is working through you somehow and encourage them to press on because it's real easy to start to take a, a fatalistic, hopeless approach to, to all things. You just... Wow, it's bigger than me. I can't do anything. Learn what it is God equipped you with and ask Him to hone it and use it the way that He can receive 
the most glory and that can be most effective in how he skilled you or set you or or within your own circumstances be that that part of the body that is just seeking to do your part whatever it is none are too small and none are not able to be used for a great purpose none of us can do everything but God has equipped all of us to do something so in your own ministry in your own service just pray Lord please just father show me what you want me to do while you have me here and then help me to do it for your glory so as believers never lose sight of the fact that we have one head and that's Jesus Christ he's preeminent and above all and as his body we do need each other and and with each other and through each other with God's help and guidance and strength and provision he can do things that are beyond our understanding we can't understand the ripple effect that it might have uh, you know just something short something I, I just wanted to to get you thinking what does God want you to do for one love one another and that's genuinely truly and heartfelt in a heartfelt way love one another so you know with that just take that thought with you and i hope god blesses you and you have a wonderful day and that he's glorified greatly in and through you and through us all his body till next time take care